And Paul, when did, when did you, you know, just to rewind the clock a little bit, um, when did you start playing guitar? And what was your first gig? I started playing the guitar when I was 12, um, really started playing. My first gig was, um, well, I played a lot with my brothers and sisters and played at school and played with a band called The Touch of Grey and played with um, the Don Johnson Society Orchestra when I was growing up. My first real big professional gig was joining Patrice Russian's band when I graduated from high school. Well, that's early. Funny thing is, funny thing is, she's still my boss because now I teach what? at the University of Southern California in the in the popular music department, and it is chaired by Dr. Patrice Russian. Unbelievable! So after all these years, she hasn't been able to, she hasn't been able to get rid of me. But she was about five years ahead, right? And in because you were actually in my class at USC. Mm -hmm. Right at seventy-seven. That's when I was there. Yeah. Yes. Wow. We were the same. How do you remember that? <laughs> I don't know. I remember because. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because I knew who all these people were, and I was too scared to go up to you. But I did go up to Billy Childs, who was two years older than I was, and that worked out well right. because I ended up in a band with Billy and Diane Reeves from doing that, and that 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 led to me not being able to finish school after five or six years. But you were there, and I, I remember you being there, and I thought, man, this guy, this is ridiculous school, the people that are here. Michael Jackson's Thriller Album. Stories in the Room. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room. Join film composer Anthony Marinelli, who programmed synthesizers for seven songs on Thriller. And AR veteran film producer Stephen Ray, who assisted Quincy Jones and was in the studio every day with Quincy and Michael. Michael Jackson's Thriller album, Stories in the Room. Did they have like a guitar department? Right. When they were just starting that, right? Interesting you say that USC was like the only place at that time that had a quote unquote yeah. studio guitar major. With Mitch Holder. And, and it was actually founded. Sorry, I'm, I'm Mitch Holder and Lee Rittenauer. Right. No, no, you're right. Mitch Holder, Lee Rittenauer, and one other uh, guy. Mitch's partner, Eddie Arkin. Eddie Arkin. Eddie that's Arkin. That's who it was. And it was, yeah. And Eddie, Eddie, you know, did a lot of stuff. He did a lot of production work, and he wrote a lot with Mitch. And one of the main teachers, my main teacher, was a guy by the name of Duke Miller. Duke Miller was Lee Rittenauer's guitar teacher when he was younger. Right. So you were able. And to so it was Duke. It was Duke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I I would sometimes just oh go ahead go ahead go ahead. No, I was just going to ask Paul. Uh, do you remember uh, the band Night Flight with Diane Reeves and Billy Charles and Anthony and Brian Banks and uh, Joe Heredia? Not Brian. I do. Not Brian. Joe Heredia. Well, no, no, Brian. That's Joe Heredia. Yeah, I do. Sometimes Kevin Johnson and yeah, 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 they just, yeah, absolutely, yeah. In fact, another interesting story. Uh, in 1981 or 82, I, I started working with George Duke in 1980. And George Duke is Diane's cousin. Yeah. And I remember came coming come to the studio one day. He said, yeah, we're going to record some songs for my cousin. <laughs> and I was like, well, who's your cousin? It's like Diane Reeves. It's like, I know Diane Reeves. And the first song we recorded was the song that was famous, famously known as the grandma song. Oh, Better Days. Silver, day. gray hair, neatly combed in place. Better Days. Better Days. Right. We right. played, that was Better like, days. that we, right. we, we, we ended the shows with that most of the time by popular demand. Yeah. With, Di with Diane. And that, and that was the, uh, yeah. And and that was like the, the uh, you know, that's one of my Diane uh, Reeves memories. But yeah, I remember Night Flight. Absolutely. Yeah, that was I remember going up there on uh, in Hollywood because he produced he produced the album um, at a studio there, and they I think he had just got a right and his Synclavier at that time too. He had just gotten a Synclavier, I think. It was it was before the Synclav. Just before it was right before the Synclav. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The old uh, I remember I would always I wouldn't miss a show when when they would play the come back in. <laughs> oh, wow. oh wow that's where steven and i met the first time it's just hanging out after shows and stuff he was just he was coming up there and hanging out with us those were super fun times and and that was 
Yeah, I was going to say that was the fun thing about growing up in Los Angeles is that there were there were enough clubs where you could play and work stuff out and try things and go hear live music. And the other thing I remember was you had club owners who weren't afraid to, you know, if you were like 17, 16 years old, they'd let you play as long as you stayed away from the bar. And, you know, and if the band leader said, no, I'm taking responsibility for him, it's like, okay, well, and he can stay, you know, and that was a lot of my training is playing with, with in clubs where, you know, I technically wasn't supposed to be there, but the, the club owners like, ah, you know, he can stay, just stay away from the bar kid. And so it was, it was a really, like you said, Anthony, it was a really great time. Well, I was under 21, but we could not get booked with Diane and Billy, right? As the leaders, we could not get booked at Dante's, the baked potato, because we were too electronic for back. And that just shows you how times have changed. Cause I had these two 2600s with the band, we, we did a big keyboard rig, you know, it was tag team oh, with, wow. with Billy and I. Yeah. So we had a full rig, but those clubs wanted, if we didn't have this stuff, they were fine. But they said, don't bring that electronic stuff. Just think how things have changed. Wow. That's amazing. I remember that. You're right, Anthony, with the, with the baked potato. They, was, they were definitely not- Couldn't get in. Seen it. And I remember the, the, the owner would let me stand in the back, I was thinking, you know, and come in the alley in the back door there. And and one night he came, walked up to me. And this is a, a night where uh, Joe Sample was hanging by the bar in the back. And Joe said, man, just let him stand here. He's only 16, but let him stand here with me. I'll make sure he doesn't drink. <laughs> and oh, yeah. it was Larry Carlton, Patrice and Dave, Patrice and Dave Grusin side by side, Harvey on drums. Uh, Alfonso Johnson on bass or, uh, or Anthony Jackson would be in town. Oh, and sometimes, and sometimes Abe Laboreal, yeah, Abe, and he had his band, Cook. Sometimes Abe, yeah, he had that band Koinonia. That was the house band. Yeah, Koinonia. Oh, Koinonia, yeah. yeah. That means coming together, if I remember correctly. Yeah, fellowship. Uh huh. Fellowship. That's a great name. But yeah, but that's a different day, different day and age because all these musicians that were on the records were still hanging out after the gigs and playing their own gigs and talking, and then. You know, it's like now it's hard to. And, and one of the things we're hoping to do is sort of rekindle that and blow the doors off everybody that's holed up, you know, with their laptops and maybe for good reason lately. But it's I think a little bit of that old school, you know, getting together with musicians and tracking and it's good. It's, it's just it can't be replaced. Yeah. Join us for the next episode of Michael Jackson's Thriller Album, Stories in the Room, with your hosts, Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Watch our extended interviews on youtube.com forward slash at stories in the room. Audio only interviews are available on all podcast networks. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Stories in the Room. For the latest news and links, visit the website, storiesintheroom.com. This podcast is produced by Christian D. Brune and David Wolf, recorded by Autovita Studios. Additional recording by Ben Rackless. Edited by Jay Spang and Sean Hedinger. Music by Anthony Marinelli and Stephen Ray. Michael Jackson's Stories in the Room.